It's been a while since I've made a video on this channel and on my other channel I have put up quite a few videos of live talks and things that I've done and whilst I've been editing these talks, um, like the one at the Royal Institution, video plug, you can click links, I don't know, I can't bother with links, um, I've noticed that I say um a lot just like that and so it's one of my New Year's resolutions to try to make I'm anxious to actually say this because then it means I actually have to do it. But one of my New Year's resolutions is to try to make a video once a week, probably on this channel, because it means that I don't have to do any editing. As you can see, I'm really dressed for the part. I'm in my Panzer onesie. This is how much I care about editing and technical stuff. But the reason I'm doing this is because everyone says over and over again, the more you practice just talking into a camera, the more natural it seems and hopefully, seeing as I want a career, speaking in public and on cameras, that will only do well for me. And I thought I'll start with a very YouTube-y thing to do actually, because uh, thanks to the DTC, this is the programme that my PhD is run by I suppose, there's a group of about six or seven different PhD programmes. Um, so yeah, they gave me a public engagement award for the science communication stuff that I already do. And with that, they gave me a £50 uh, book voucher for a local bookshop, Blackwells, which I think the Norrington Room, which is downstairs in Oxford, um, has the longest bookshelf of any bookshop in the UK, I think. I might be wrong. But hey, that's what these videos are about. It's all unedited. Uh, so I managed to buy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books uh, for just over £50 and they are all science related because I thought I might as well use the prize money to inspire me to do more science communication. So I thought I'll do a book haul as my first video of 2015. This is going to be a long video, sorry, because I'm not going to edit this either because I just literally just want to practice talking into a camera. So we're going to start off with the epigenetics revolution and this is the first book that came into my mind when I thought, hey, I've got this money on which I can spend on books, what should I spend it on? Because it's written by Nessa Carey and I saw her speak about epigenetics at the British Science Festival and she was incredible. When I'm watching other people giving science talks, especially if it's on biology, a topic that I already know about, a lot of the time I'm actually watching them to learn how they give a talk rather than to learn what it is that they're talking about and particularly on subjects that I already know because then I can think hey I know the background information for that it's interesting these are the bits that they've picked out and she was fantastic um, one of the things was simply instead of standing behind the desk at the front of the lecture theatre walking in front of it and just sitting on top of it made it really casual and just a really nice thing she used lovely metaphors um, used an example of I'm saying I'm already Gotta to, got to try and think about this. She's an example of epigenetics being marshmallows with jelly tots stuck on and fruit laces around to kind of demonstrate DNA and sticking bits on. So epigenetics is sticking bits onto DNA and it's a revolution because we don't really think about it that much at the moment. It goes against what we already know, which is that everything is inherited by mutations in the DNA and actually Epigenetics says, well, the environment and the environmental effects can be inherited as well. So really looking forward to reading this because she was a great speaker, so I'm guessing she'll be a good writer. Next, I'm going to have to go faster through these. Stephen Hawking, Brief History of Time, very famous. I know very little about physics. It's quite embarrassing how little I know about physics because um, I only had to do dual science, effectively, two science GCSEs and so I didn't even do biology, chemistry, physics, I did science and additional science and I didn't do physics beyond that level so I have a very small amount of knowledge about physics so it was either this or the Feynman lectures and I decided seeing as the theory of everything was coming out in the cinemas I might as well go for this. I have no idea if I'll understand it. Uh, I know it's a popular book so I'm guessing that it's well written and relatively easy to understand but we'll see. This must actually be a nice idea if I make a book review after I've read each of these. It's a video idea. I'm probably going to run short on video ideas. Next one. Uh, this is actually a book, first of two books that I never heard of before walking into the bookshop. And this is why I quite like bookshops. 
because whilst I'd done quite a bit of research before I went in, trying to think of what books I might like, you can also just wander in and see what's on the shelves. This is Dan Dennett's uh, Darwin's Dangerous... There's an alliteration for you. Dan Dennett's Darwin's Dangerous Idea. And Dan Dennett is a philosopher whose TED talk I have used in the Supernormal Stimuli video of mine on my other channel. And I don't know anything about this book. Dawkins has recommended it on the back, so it's probably good. But I'm an evolutionary biologist, and as I was saying when I'm watching talks, I also really like reading popular books on my topic, because it they often give really good analogies, or they often give you the history of science that's missing when you're doing really dry accounts of things. It's all very well hearing about how Darwin knew a certain amount of information about sex, uh, but not too much and blah blah blah. But then when someone puts into context, in this case it was Tim Burkhead in a book Promiscuity, puts into context, well he was Victorian, his wife and his daughter were the ones proofreading his manuscript, so it's unsurprising that he wasn't being quite as obscene as possibly, or obscene by Victorian standards, as his knowledge would have allowed then it's that context, that human story behind it that I really like. So I'm hoping, I don't know which of Darwin's dangerous ideas Dan Dennett will be discussing, but I hope that it will be a delightful read. I can't think of another D. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. Next one, last one that I also didn't know about, Musicophilia uh, by Oliver Sacks. And it is apparently, I have no idea what this is about, I don't think I've even read the blurb yet, uh, it's about how music interacts with psychology and the, I think, clinical and medical effects um, as well as neurological effects that music can have on the brain. And I am a massive musician. Uh, I love my music. I always have the radio on. I play piano, clarinet, guitar badly, ukulele a little bit. I sing a little bit. I probably shouldn't. Um, but one thing I love about music, because I was trained doing piano and clarinet all since the age of about five or six, it really makes a difference, I find, on my health. So I get travel sick and music, listening to music is pretty much the only thing that I have found that prevents me from getting travel sick and which is very useful as well because I get travel sick while using a microscope because travel sickness is when there's a disconnect between what your eyes can see and what your body is feeling in terms of motion. So in a car your body is feeling the movement but your eyes aren't seeing it. Uh, and in a microscope it's the other way around, if the thing in down the microscope is moving but your body is still then your brain gets confused and makes you sick. Um, I find music helps with that, I also find music really helps when I've got a migraine. Uh, so I personally believe in the power of music. Uh, I hate personal anecdotes like that. That's how homeopathy spreads. Oh yes, I took some pills and they really helped me. But I'd be interested to see if there is any evidenced, uh, evidence-based research um, evidence-based research? Any research and evidence to support my claims or whether it really is just a placebo effect. What If by Randall Munro, also known as the uh, writer of XKCD, which is an online comic which is very funny and this is one that I'd heard about. It's a load of different questions um, and it's got pretty illustrations as per the XKCD style and it I think it, the premise is it just takes what initially seem really, really stupid questions. So the one illustrated here is, I think, what would happen if you dropped a T-Rex into a black hole? And then takes them to their absurd conclusion. And I imagine it's a little bit like the new scientist, Why Don't Penguins Feet Freeze, in that series. So just lots of little tidbits, and hopefully one of them will capture my imagination and probably spark off a new video of my own, something probably completely unrelated, but it's nice to have different areas and it should be a fun read. Then we have The Naming of the Shrew, anyone who's seen my other channel and has seen that I had a whole video, in fact it's one of my most popular videos, I don't really know why, called uh, Six Stories Behind Animal Names. Maybe it's because it's got six and it's a list, like a Buzzfeed thing. Apparently Buzzfeed titles do well. Um, this book is John Wright's The Naming of the Shrew, not The Taming of the Shrew, The Naming, and it's a book all about etymologies of names, um, so the ones they have on here, like Troglodytes, Troglodyte, 
troglodytes, 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 which I think is the common wren. Um, and what else do they have? Rhinoceros unicornus, um, Arani, Aragog. So it's looking at Latin um, binomial nomenclature and that Linnaeus came up with. He has a whole video on this. Uh, and just looking at the stories behind the names because you've got to remember that people come up with the names of species and when people do things there's usually a funny story behind it. So it's an entire book, not just a six minute video, but an entire book all about Latin names and stuff like that. So I'm just looking forward to that. I probably won't make a video on it because I've already made one. But it should be a fun read. And it's a pretty book. It's hardback as well. You can get so many books in Black Worlds. They have uh, such cheap, uh, so many discounts on. And then finally, I couldn't, I couldn't buy a load of books and not get Alice Roberts' new book, The Incredible Unlikeliness of Being, because if you don't know already, as much as I love David Attenborough, Alice Roberts is my, I won't go so far as to say idol, but I would say that what would Alice Roberts do is not a too uncommon question that comes into my brain. That's a very roundabout way of saying I think she's amazing. I really identify with her as a role model. Role model, that's the word I should go for. She is my biggest role model, I would say. And so I want to know what her book is like. I also saw her give the associated talk at the British Science Festival, like I did with Nessa Carey. And it was great. I was like, of course it would be, because it's Alice Roberts. And so this book is about human evolution and anatomy and physiology and drawing together all the disparate areas of biology and physiology into a kind of single story about humans. And I don't know that much about humans because I'm never... Everyone obsesses about humans and I think humans are seen as quite special when we're really not. But it means that there should be lots of stuff that I don't know about in here. And it goes all the way from embryology and genetics and that kind of thing. So it's nice. I'll be really interested to see what she's like at writing because I've never actually read any of her books before. And that is the end of the book haul. Seven books there for 58 quid, I think it came to. Not bad. Um, and as I said, maybe I can read one and then give a review on it in a moment. I do also read fiction books. I've just finished a great book um, called Something About Falling. She says, try to look what it is. That was a bad segue. What was it? Something... The Shock of the Fall. That, that was a great book um, where the writer... You're very conscious that the first, it's a first person narrative. You're very conscious that the, or the writer is very conscious of his writing process. So you hear him tapping away on a public computer and then he'll be telling the story and then he'll say, hey, you stop looking over my shoulder because at the time he is writing someone. It's really good and it starts off with his brother dying. This isn't a spoiler, it's in the blurb. It really starts off very early on with his brother dying, I think like the third page. And then you know something's not quite right, but it's never explicitly explained to you. You just kind of piece it as you go along, which is really good. And I've also just started Gone Girl, which, yeah, I should probably read. So I have a lot of reading to do, and as a result I should probably end this video and start reading. I hope you liked this video. If you didn't, to be honest, I'm not really too bothered. They're more, as I said, for me to practice speaking without saying ums and errs too many times and seeing whether I can... I do blink a lot naturally, but I also blink even more when I'm speaking into a camera. So hopefully over a long enough period of time doing these videos, as I say, hopefully once a week. Though I'm, again, I won't be too bothered if I don't stick to that schedule of unedited, quite boring, quite dull videos of me just talking about nothing. As long as I'm talking about something, it'll go up. I've probably been talking about 10 minutes now. Congratulations for watching if you've watched this far. Why don't you put, she says looking up at the wall, why don't you put the word penguin in 
a comment somehow. Try and make it subtle so that anyone else reading this who hasn't got this far doesn't know why everyone's talking about penguins in the comments. Um, I say that because there's a John Lewis penguin bag over there. So yeah, thanks for watching. Maybe if you've read some of these books, tell me about it. Otherwise, if you want to watch the next one, do and keep smiling.